Using whole genome sequencing for newborn screening is something that isn't straightforward, either technically or in terms of its ethical and societal implication. So before we even considered whether we should be involved in doing it, we needed to get the opinion of the public. We need evidence, but we don't just need straightforward evidence. We need to have a feel for what the hopes and aspirations and beliefs, I suppose, of the population are. Part of the reason I thought we should have a dialogue in the first place is because the NSC is aware of, you know, from the horizon scanning and the conversations we have, there's a huge amount of interest in this. And so I pressed and pressed and lobbied and lobbied and said, let's have a societal dialogue about this. And I have to say, it's been fantastic. You know, I'm really impressed with it. Public dialogue is all about developing socially informed policy and getting the public voice and hearing public views, hopes, fears, expectations, sort of front and center as you're developing policies and programs. So you need to have that mix and the diversity of the public in your public dialogue. Unlike, say, a focus group, which might ask people what they think or time of brief discussion, people have time over weeks and multiple meetings with each other and with experts. You put them in the same room as experts and specialists. It's not just a matter of hearing a presentation. They can ask questions. They can engage in actual dialogue with people in real time. We've done lots of these processes face to face. Would it work online? And I think it really did. The way that they were done, no comment was silly, no thought was foolish, everything was welcome. And it's quite unusual in human discourse to have people so politely taking really quite different positions on things. Patients have really deep thoughts about you know, issues that will impact them or their family or people that they might know, even if it's not them um, specifically. I think it started a really great conversation about how to do this properly, but also making sure that there were no assumptions about what was being said. So is this what you mean? Is this what I'm getting at? Does everyone else agree? Who disagrees with this? You know, does anybody and why do you disagree as opposed to you're wrong? The thing that struck me is, you know, I'm steeped in genes and genomics, but actually, do you know, people don't need to know about base pairs and DNA helices and things to actually hone in directly on what really counts. So the wisdom of the public was never better on display than in those sessions. I was really keen to take part, I think, because um, cystic fibrosis is a complicated uh, condition and very reliant um, on understanding your genetics and what mutations of CF you might have. And I think if it's introduced as a standard conversation and people build up that understanding of what whole genomic sequencing actually means, it makes it easier for everybody to understand and really understand the benefits that it can offer. This dialogue has been immensely important. What we were told by the participants in this dialogue has made a real difference to how we frame the next part of this journey because it's set the course, if I can describe it that way, as to how we proceed in the future. The overwhelming impression was that people were very supportive of the use of whole genome sequencing, but there were very clear uh, caveats really around making sure that there was fully informed consent, uh, and that data was kept uh, very secure and, and not used for purposes that people didn't want it to be used for. And there was also this recognition that uh, we should only be screening for conditions that can actually be treated or prevented. So this caution about giving people information and helping them manage it when you give it, and the fact that the tests themselves aren't ter necessarily terribly predictive of whether you're actually going to get an illness or not, those things came through from the participants and we mustn't forget that they are they're incredibly important to making sure that we don't um, over promise and leave people lifetimes in limbo not knowing whether they're going to get this genetic disease or not they told us loud and clear that having the right support for parents who got an adverse diagnosis was something that was very very important to them not just in terms of genetic counseling but also the mental health support 
or the support of other parents who had children with the same condition. We will make sure we develop the kind of systems that the dialogue participants pointed out that we needed. Hello and welcome. We're live streaming this event. It's being watched by over a thousand people who have registered to join this webinar. I and ScienceWise were completely blown away by the fact that so many people wanted to come and hear about public dialogue and about this technology. One of the nicest things about the event today was a man called Robert Green, who is probably the best known of the American scientists working in the whole genome sequencing for newborns, who just said that what Genomics England does and what this dialogue does is world leading. Genomics England and this group of people has truly led the world in deliberately, thoughtfully, appropriately, um, really plowing the ground in terms of genomics and how this works its way out. What you and this entire group have done so well, Sir Mark, Rich, all of you, have, have been to pull together the various experts and the people whose lives will be affected. And I just can't tell you how, how much I admire that. Hearing that was, was really fantastic because we know we're at the forefront, but we also know that we need to take the public with us. Without that, dialogue between people, the right services will never be put in place because you haven't properly listened to what people want, what their concerns are, what their fears are, and what their hopes are for the future.